Uh, you left slideshow mode, by the way, just so you know. Oh, okay. Okay. Can you, yeah, can you full screen it? There we go. Okay. No, it should be okay. The, okay. So, uh, folks, uh, next up we have Miguel Barroso, uh, who's going to be talking about one of the major features um, for a recent release of Kubert. Uh, network hot plug. Um, so, welcome, Miguel. Hello. Uh, I'd first like to thank you all for, for, especially for those of you which is already late. Uh, well, thanks for joining this talk about network interface hot plug for Qvert at the Qvert Summit. Uh, the first thing that I think it's important to say is like a a short disclaimer that none of this code has been merged. So it, this is kind of a feature that's work in progress. But nevertheless, I think it's a very interesting feature. You can read the good thing here is that you're still in time to kind of make your voice heard and state your opinion on uh, pretty much a bunch of stuff that I'll be showing here. Um, you can find my email in the bottom left corner if you want to reach me personally. And yeah, let's move to the agenda of the presentation. Uh, this will be, in order for us to all follow the things I'm going to be speaking about, I think it deserves a short introduction. First about CNI and uh, then of uh, Maltus. I'll introduce the Maltus project and I'll also give a brief overview of uh, how uh, Qvert sets up the networking for VMs. Once that's clear, we can move into motivation, problem and goals. And uh, with that, we'll move into the implementation parts, both for the Maltus project and also for Qvert. I'll then show the demo of this proof of concept and conclude with the conclusions and the next steps for all this work. Okay, let's move to the introduction section in which we have first to address the Kubernetes networking model. So the Kubernetes networking model is quite simple, but and it states that according to it, all pods can communicate with all pods across different nodes even if uh, these pods are using the host network. The second statement it says is that uh, an agent on a node can communicate with all pods on the node that the agent manages. And uh, this, in order to implement this networking model, uh, Kubernetes uses CNI, which stands for Container Network Interface. It, CNI is a CNCF project as well and is a plugin-based networking solution for Kubernetes. It is also a container orchestration engine agnostic. Uh, this means that as far as CNI is concerned, Kubernetes is just another runtime, like uh, plenty other runtimes could make use of CNI to implement their networking. Um, okay, so, the way CNI works is whenever a pod gets um, created, like there are two events that are very interesting to CNI. The first is whenever a pod gets created. So when a pod gets created, the CNI will be invoked by the runtime and will create and configure a network interface in the pods and connect that to the cluster wide network. Uh, on the other hand, whenever the pod gets deleted, the um, CNI will remove the allocated resources. A good example of um, a resource to deallocate is, for instance, if you use IPAM for your pods, well, you'll need it needs to clean up the IP address allocation from the pool. Uh, now, the, how does CNI work? So, in, CNI is in fact just a binary executable located on the host file system and is invoked by the runtime, like start a new process and um, the configuration of the plugin is passed via standard in. It's a JSON encoded string with the full configuration in it and the parameters, one of which is the command, like it says add or delete, 
uh, the parameters are passed via environment variables to the plugin. The output of the result, so like it creates stuff and does stuff, but the, the output of it is also um, sent to st standard out of the plugin and is cached on the host file system. Um, it's interesting to say that Kubernetes chose to use CNI in a very simple way, or and it just creates a single pod interface on all pods. It will use the same CNI the entire time. And in fact, what they do is implement a single cluster-wide network that will interconnect all the pods in the cluster. So this means that if for whatever reason you need to, or you want um, more than one interface, networking interface in the pod, you need to search for answers outside the realm of Kubernetes. Kubernetes will not do that. It's outside their responsibility. And this is why we're speaking about Maltus right now. Maltus goal is quite literally just that, to enable multiple interfaces on a pod, on a Kubernetes pod. Um, it is a meta CNI plugin, and uh, the word meta here is to denote or to highlight that it is a CNI plugin, just like the other ones, but it will in turn invoke other CNI plugins. So it needs to figure out which to invoke and invoke it, and then proxy the result back. Okay, so let's uh, discuss and show a little bit how the how Maltus is used. So if you have a pod that requires, for which you want to have multiple interfaces, you need to specify a list of attachments using a special annotation on the pod. The annotation name is this one, kubernetes.v1.cni.cncf.io slash networks. It is also a JSON encoded string where you pass a list of the name for it in the multi-spec network, uh, multi-network spec is uh, network selection elements. The examples we're looking here are quite simple. It just features the name, but in reality, this allows for more complex configurations like you can, you can specify uh, specific MAC addresses for your for this particular attachment, uh, specific IP address, these sort of uh, more complex complex things. And what does Maltus do with this thing? So, in essence, Maltus will look for uh, the configuration for the CNI plugin also in the Kubernetes data store. So it will must match a network attachment definition object and it must match by name so here we have the data plane uh attachment and it will you must have like a matching data plane network attachment definition and the network attachment definition dot spec dot config you'll have a json encoded string which will in essence be the configuration that you'll pass to the delegate plugin the delegate plugin is the plugin that will, in fact, create the extra interface and connect that to your secondary network. And here in this diagram, we have two scenarios. Uh, the left diagram represents a vanilla Kubernetes deployment with just a single cluster-wide uh, CNI plugin that will implement a single cluster-wide network. It, as an example, it is uh, Flannel. The right diagram, on the other hand, uh, shows the deployment with Maltus. Maltus is deployed as the default cluster CNI binary and will, in turn, always invoke the common cluster-wide CNI plugin, which is responsible for creating the pod's primary network. Um, this means that if you do not request additional networks using the annotation I've shown previously, Maltus is just a proxy between the runtime and the, let's say, the cluster's default CNI. And then for each network that you specify on the, on the annotation, it will in find out what is the type of plugin to invoke and will invoke that uh, plugin, passing it the configuration as we've shown before and does create an interface per each of the additional selections. 
Uh, once now that this is clear, let's go and mention a little few things about Kubevert networking. So, so far we've covered uh, CNI. It will basically um, configure networking within the pod. Now we're talking about Kubevert and we want to have the VMs network. So we want to have networking in the VMs, like not only in the pod. So the question is how can we extend the networking from the pod interface and into the VM? There are quite a few ways to do this and I'll just use one as an example. And it's using uh, something that is called bridge binding. And um, for it, Kubevert will need to perform two tasks. The first of which is to create auxiliary networking infrastructure in the pod. In this case, as I've said, a Linux bridge will be created. The pod interface will be connected to this Linux bridge. A new tap device will also be created and configured uh, specifically the MAC address and MTU. And finally, this tap device will also be connected into the input bridge. Once we have this uh, auxiliary infrastructure created, the second Qvert task is we need to uh, instruct libvert to create the, we need to instruct libvert to point at this already configured tab device. And for that, we need to specify an interface of type ethernet, point at the um, tab by name, and be sure to disable the managed flag. Uh, if not, Libvert will attempt to reconfigure the tap device with a MAC address and an MTU, which will probably cause plenty of trouble because the pods do not, the pods where Libvert runs do not have the capabilities to do so. Okay, and once this happens, finally, when uh, QM boots up the VM, like an emulated network device will be created in the virtual machine from the previously created tap. So this concludes our introduction and we can now move into the motivation and goals section. And motivation is quite clear and simple to define. The, um, so we, we have some virtual machines that run critical workloads that simply cannot tolerate a restart without impacting service. Common scenario is, uh, for instance, a VM is created before the network, like for whatever reason, uh, an organization's network topology is optical workload must connect to this newly created network. Um, furthermore, adding or removing um, interfaces to running virtual machines is also an industry standard which is available in multiple platforms with which uh, Qvert wants to have feature parity with. Okay, given this, we can now define the problem as providing the dynamic attachment of L2 networks without risk restarting the workload, whether it is a pod or a virtual machine. And now we can clearly list our goals, which are to add network interfaces to running VMs, remove networking interfaces from running VMs. And the third one that um, a VM can have multiple interfaces connected to the same secondary networks. Finally, last thing, whenever I said VMs before, you can replace that by pods. We want to do the exact same things for pods. And with this, we can move into the implementation section where we'll start by the changes required in Maltus. And for that, we'll start with how will this feature be used in Maltus? So remember that the user, the way the user has to indicate secondary networks is by a special annotation on the pod. So it's only natural for the way to plug new pod interfaces is also by updating this annotation. So what we want to do is if you want to add a new interface to the pod, you just add a new attachment to this list. The example below, we've added a new attachment named new shiny network. On the other hand, if you want to remove an attachment from the pod, what you have to do is just go ahead and delete that attachment from the annotation list. An interesting thing to say here is that uh, we do not plan 
at all to um, allow for updating already existing attachments. Like we are not thinking of um, leaving the door open for this thing to like, let's say you want to, I, to, to, to update the IP address of this particular attachment, for instance. And so let's just update the value on the annotation. That is not what we're trying to get at. So updates to existing networks are out of scope. We just care about adding new attachments or removing old attachments. And uh, a question that probably is coming to you right now is, okay, but this is reactive. So you need to be looking at the pod. And CNI is simply a simple, is a binary executable located on the host file system that will be triggered by the runtime on certain set of events whenever the pod gets added or deleted so where will we put this code and what is it that we want to do as i've said before we want to have something watching the pods controlling their annotations and whenever the annotation changes do kind of, some kind of things for for instance whenever new attachments are added to this annotation we should trigger CNI add for these new attachments. Whenever um, a network selection element, on the other hand, is removed from the annotation of a given pod, we should trigger uh, the corresponding CNI delete for that particular attachment. For that, Kubernetes gives us uh, the control loop, like the, the controller pattern, and that is exactly what we want to use. The thing is, but where will we put this controller? So our proposal for this to the multi -team, team was to, to first refactor Multis as a thick CNI plugin. So a thick plugin is characterized in by being by a client server architecture. So the shim, the multi shim here on the picture. It is a simple binary executable located on the host file system that implements the CNI API and the runtime will interact with it as it did before. But the all the heavy polling will be implemented on the Maltus controller, which is a daemon serving, uh, exposing a, for instance, a RESTful API, but it could also be a gRPC based. It, like the protocol does is not that important for our use case i think that a restful api that speaks with json is more than enough and uh this thing is listening on a unix domain socket that is bind mounted into the host so that the client can communicate and send requests and get the replies from from these this multis controller multis controller will do all the heavy pulling figure out the configuration invoke the delegate, which will in, in turn create the interfaces on the pods, grab the response and send the response back to the multi shim. The multi shim that has the response will event, will afterwards output the or ac echo into standard out the result and will also cache it on the host file system. And this allows this multis controller that we see here, like a daemon that is uh, listening and exposes a RESTful API to also host the controller. So this will in turn do two things. It will expose a RESTful API through which the runtime will say that a new pod got added or uh, a new pod got or, or an old pod was deleted. This controller will also look to the and to changes in the annotations and react to these updates but by invoking the delegate that will create the new um, interfaces or remove old interfaces. Excuse me for a second. Okay, and this takes us to the changes in, in QVert. And I think it's easier to start with an example and uh, show like, a diagram of the networking of within a pod and a virtual machine. So as we've I've shown before, we have our in pod bridge, our pod interface, and the running interface in the VM. And everything is networked, and our VM has one uh, interface and is connected to one network. 
So what we want to do here is to like a good API for interface hot plug for Qvert virtual machines would follow the same approach we described for the for the pods previously. You update the virtual machine specification, like you add or remove interfaces from it, and this should trigger the interface feature hot plug or hot unplug. Now the thing is that this is not possible in Qvert because like it, it, users cannot mutate the pod specification. The only entities that are able to mutate the pod spe the, um, the VM specification are the Qvert control plane entities. For instance, the API server, vert handler, uh, vert controller, those, um, those entities. So for this, we are proposing to mimic uh, the, um, the hot plug disk feature. And we expose, we add a new command to Qvert uh, CLI that um well basically adds the you sent you use this command the add interface and this will send a a put request to the to this to a new sub resource exposed on the api server and have the api server mutate the virtual machine specification for us now the vert the um, vert controller once it sees this uh vm spec update it will patch the the like the vert controller owns the pod and it will patch the annotation to multus with multus will then see it and will trigger what we've seen before and add a new interface into the pod once this is done the controller will look at the pods and eventually it will see a new interface on the pods network status once it sees the new interface on the pods network status it will patch the the virtual machine status saying that there's a new hot plugged interface and this is what's happening in this part of the diagram once the qvert agent where a vert handler sees this update it will do the first thing that we've seen previously and it will create all sorts of networking uh, infrastructure like in this case the bridge it will create the tap device configure the tap device and connect the pod interface and the tap now what we're left to do is then it's also the agent that must do it is also to converge the virtual machine status and like make the, the like push the changes from the spec and into the status and for that it will eventually call the attach interface and i'm here showing like the verse attach device and detach device commands because it's easier to show but our like our proof concept is using the golang binding the libverts golang binding to do so but this is like uh, the idea behind the the payload and once this command is executed like it will hot plug the interface into our virtual machine which finally will lead into the virtual machine having um, an emulated network device that is interconnected via a bridge to the pod interface whose networking was already configured via cni and finally the last thing i want to address on the implementation section is related to qm's machine type this attribute can be seen as a virtual chipset that provides certain default devices, like for instance, uh, PCI graphics card, Ethernet controller, etc. Now, QM supports two main variants of machine type for x86 hosts: PC, a legacy chipset released somewhere in the 90s, and uh, Q35, which is a mo uh, the most modern machine type available. Now, this last one. The most modern one, Q35, has a limitation in its definition. By default, it supports a single hot plug operation. And uh, in its API, it even says that when users require more than one hot plug, they must prepare in advance for it by requesting an appropriate number of PCI Express root port controllers. So our solution, or our proposed solution here, is to expose a knob on each of the VMs to specify the number of PCI root port controllers. Our proposal is to put it on domain.devices.number of PCI ports. And um, 
like both OpenStack and Overt implement this, but the thing is they do it cluster wide. So this number will be cluster wide. And the curious fact here is that their defaults are totally different. Like OpenStack Nova defaults to zero, like no hot plug by default. It's configurable, you can change it. And Overt chose something totally different. It defaults to 16, which means that you'll surely be able to hot plug more than one. And okay, let's move into our demos. I'm not sure if I'm very safe on time or not. So let's jump directly into an hot plug operation of a Q35 machine type. Okay, so here on the left, I'm going to be provisioning uh, the scenario. The first thing is this feature is protected behind the feature gate. So we needed to activate it. It's named hot plug next. Uh, second thing it did was to provision a uh, network attachment definition. As you can see, the configuration is quite minimal. And finally, it provisioned a virtual machine. We're going to log into it, so, excuse me, and see that there are, there, like there's a single networking interface in the, in the VM. Now here in the top right corner, we're going to be watching the network status uh, of the interface. And in the bottom right corner, I'm going to be showing in real time the annotations, like the networks list on the, on the pods. For that, we're going to need the name of the pods. Should happen any moment. And as you see, we have an empty list of uh, network selections. This means that there are no additional networks. Now we're going to be um, requesting an additional interface for our virtual machine by using the QVirt CLI. Okay, as we see here in the, um, in the bottom right corner, a new interface was listed on, on Multus. And now we see a new hot plug interface request on the top right corner. It, it's in the phase. Pod interface ready means that the interface is available within the pod. And eventually the, the state converged and the interface got plugged into our virtual machine. Let's, let's now, I'm not sure if this is, oh, it's running. Let's now uh, use the console. And as we see, we have a new extra interface here. We can see that the MAC address matches. And this is it. We're now going to show the thing I've spoken before about the machine. And as we see, we get the error here that no more PCI slots are available for this VM. So I'm now going to show the second demo, which is the exact same thing, but this time we're going to define this um, exposed knob that I've mentioned previously. The, uh, here's the network interface list status in real time. And as you can see, here's our new attribute. So I'm defining for this particular VM the that I want 24 number of PCI ports on it in it. Let's now provision. Oh, it's already provisioned. As we can see, it's on dot spec dot domain dot devices dot number of PCI ports. It replies with 24. Let's show the status of the VM. As we see, we have a single interface, and let us now hide. Let us now ex request one interface. Here we have it, and now let's request another interface. And here is our second interface. So, when we want to have more than one interface um, hot plug, we need to to tune up the machine, the, the virtual machine specification a little bit. Uh, Josh, how am I on time? Like, do I have time for an, um, another demo? You've got, you've got like one minute. I got one minute, so I do not have time for the hot unplug. So let's jump to the conclusions. Um, yeah, so 
obviously one conclusion of this work is that if you want to hot plug or unplug to the VM, you first need to do it to the pod. And the second obvious thing is that we've chosen to implement this also for pods and to put that implementation in Maltus. So Maltus is a requirement to use uh, this feature. Another interesting thing to say is that the cluster default network is entirely off limits. We're not going to be touching that, nor we want to. Lastly, some machine types require more changes, and that is the number of PCI root port controllers that I've mentioned uh, and, and shown in this previous demo. Like the next steps basically are to productify it. We have open PRs for all the work. Uh, the one that's most advanced is the refactor into a thick plugin. But yeah, there's work started for everything else. And um, I thank you for your time. Thank you for listening to me. And uh, well, if you want to, you can reach to me and give feedback about the feature. And uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks for your time again. Okay. I'm not sure if you have time for questions yeah. or not. Yeah, let's just take a minute or so for questions. Um, <clears throat> so, do, 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 do. let's see, what do we got here? Um, this add remove network can be done in a Windows VM is, is the question. Uh, From I Andrew. have not tried that at all. And I, I am unsure if this requires Vert.io or not, honestly. So I do not have the answer to that right now. I'll try to come up with a better reply for it later on. OK, uh, Peter wants to know, can we hot plug unplug SRIOV interfaces? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. Like we. We're not planning on doing anything on, uh, we're, we're considering only uh, hot plugging or unplugging uh, bridge type uh, interfaces. Now, SRIOV is especially tricky because it involves a device plugin and nothing in my proposal involves contacting uh, or using that framework. It would require, I mean, it's, it's a different feature actually. Alexander is a comment there. I don't know if you want to address that. Okay. Yeah. I, okay. I don't think there's an alternative here. Like it's the the API of uh, that Livered provides. I am unaware of an alternative to it. Okay. Um, well, so next up, uh, we're going to have uh, one of the folks from NVIDIA talking about 